Thomas, the man of the hour. Uh, you should probably be able to see him on the uh, webinar there. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to uh, thank everyone for being here today. Um, thanks, Mark, for joining us again as well. Um, he's got a lot of cool stuff to talk about. Um, basically, a lot of the tenets of animation. Uh, he'll explain more about it later. Uh, it's also known as the 12 Principles of Animation. I'll uh, go into that a little bit where you can find it and stuff. Um, yeah, this is a uh, Reillusion webinar. So as always, we are taking uh, questions at the very end of the webinar. Uh, we'll have a Q&A. So if you have any questions, put your questions in the Q&A panel and we'll get to those at the end of today's webinar. All right, and uh, Mark's gonna be doing a live demo for us in just a moment. Uh, we are gonna be sending out as always a survey for you guys. So if you have any, um, you know, any feedback you wanna give us or any suggestions for future webinars and stuff, um, just make sure you uh, fill out that survey and get the discount for the content store. And um, we are recording this as well. So uh, if you if we go too fast at some point or you wanna review something at a later date, we are recording it and we'll send you a link uh, to the recording via email. And it's also being live broadcast on YouTube. Unfortunately, we're not gonna be taking questions from YouTube. Uh, so if you want to uh, get your questions answered, uh, make sure you uh, log in with the Zoom link. All right. I think that about covers the introductory part of uh, what we're doing in this webinar. Here's the outline. Uh, Mark will give you a bit more of a uh, overlay uh, a, li a little bit later as to what's going to be going on. Uh, I don't want to steal his thunder by uh, <laughs> introducing too much here, uh, but there's a couple things I want to introduce before I uh, hand the reins over to Mark here. Um, a lot of you I know uh, attending this webinar have not yet uh, purchased or not like not yet tried Cartoon Animator, uh, but you're interested in it. So if you are interested in Cartoon Animator and you want to tr uh, try the 30-day free trial demo uh, from our main page, reillusion.com, you can just go to products and you'll find Cartoon Animator right here. And in Cartoon Animator, you can find all sorts of stuff here, um, add-ons, learning. Uh, in the learn uh, menu, there's a 12 principles of animation, which is uh, Mark's kind of learning course. He's gonna preview today. Uh, you can learn more about that by going to this page and you can get the free download, the free demo download right here. Uh, this this uh, course is free. You can just register for it from this page here. Uh, so I'll throw this in the chat window for you guys, just in case. Um, I'm going to be possibly putting links in the chat window um, throughout the webinar, or, or Mark will, whatever. And uh, so you can have those in the chat. But we're going to be answering questions only from the Q&A uh, panel there, Q&A window, whatever you want to call it. Um, OK, so that's the um, 12 principles of animation where you can find it. You can also go up here to free trial for Cartoon Animator 4. Just click the free trial and here's your free download for either Mac or Windows. Okay, um, cool. And some uh, stuff that comes with it, yada, yada. Give it a try before you uh, before you buy, obviously. Always a good idea. And one final thing I want to mention here as well. In our content store, we have our weekly special, which in this case is a really awesome weekly special. Uh, this is a Metro City Life uh, content pack. Regular $30 on sale for $1. So you'd be crazy not to buy this, basically. This is a really useful pack. Uh, has tons of stuff in it. I'm going to throw this in the chat window for you as well. If you want to pick that up, uh, where is my chat window disappeared? Oops. Uh, ba -ba -ba. There we go. There we go. <laughs> I lost it for a second. I'm going to throw this link in there for you guys as well. Um, I'll just click in this uh, link for really quickly here because basically it's a really cool pack. Lots of cool uh, buildings and stuff in it. Uh, props like city props and there's actual scenes that you can just uh, get. This is like, honestly, it's a no brainer to get this uh, really. Um, so yeah, pick it up and you get a chance, a dollar you spend. That's like what, seven Starbucks? Or no, that's that's like one seventh of a Starbucks coffee these days. So <laughs> you'd be crazy not to. All right, anyways, uh, enough of me blabbering on about nonsense. Um, I'm going to uh, get Mark on the line here. So Mark, if you wanna maybe unmute your, uh, microphone we can get to get to chatting here all righty yeah i can hear you fine yes perfect cool Alrighty. so you're good to go good to go Woo. right on Hi. I salute you sir hi <laughs> good to see you <laughs> yeah hey, good to see you again buddy all righty okay so thank you very much for that introduction kai uh, let's get it started i'm i have the chat open here so I want to have this to be a little bit interactive. So first thing, uh, who here has Cartoon Animator or a trial or of Cartoon Animator already installed? Anyone? Just type me in the chat like this, right? I do, you, you, Cheryl, 
All righty. Okay. And thank you very much, Reed, Mark Dent. Very, really nice, really nice. Okay, I do. Me, me, me. Oh, perfect. Okay, so who here doesn't have or hasn't have has not installed, right? Uh, if you haven't installed it, just not installed, right? Just type it in the chat. Like I, you haven't installed it yet. Like you, you don't have it. Okay, Einstein. Okay, Patrick, Vivek. Alrighty. So a couple of you don't have it installed yet. All right. Okay, so what I'm going to ask you to do is this. You don't learn by watching, you learn by doing. And that's why I'm going to provide you uh, on this webinar with project files that you can open in your computer and then, oh, look at this, and then see some projects that I'm going to show you. And you can open them in your computer and see all the stuff that I'm talking about. And then you can move, like, you're going to have the file and you can tinker with it, destroy it completely if you want, and then download it again. So for that, I'm going to ask you to just go to this side that uh, Kai already referred to and download the trial right now and install it while I do the introduction, all right? So just go there to that link and install it for those of you who don't have it yet, all right? So I'm going to start this. Let me just, I just shared that. And then let me just open this. I'm opening here this. That I'm going to show you uh, today. I'm going to talk about the 12 principles. I'm going to share my screen. Right. Oh, wait. I want to share also with sound in case some of the videos have sound. Alrighty. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to be sharing a couple of videos. But sometimes when you want to watch some of the videos, sometimes the internet is lagging a little bit. I know because I'm from Mexico and sometimes the internet here is a little bit slow. So if that is the case, I'm also going to give you this other link, right? So you can click there and go through each of the videos, right? And the link has these video examples that I'm going to be referring to in this webinar, right? So we can go by them one by one, as I mentioned them. So first I'm going to talk about video one. And so let me introduce you to the 12 principles of animation. Like what are they? Okay, yeah, 12 principles. Anyone has heard of them? Like the 12 principles of animation and you go like, yeah, I have no idea what they are, but just heard of it. Like, okay, Brian, yes, you have heard of them. Who else? Like I have, just type it like that, just like Brian. Atharva, okay. Yeah, okay, a couple of you have heard of them, right? So the 12 principles of animation were created specifically for character animation, right? So whenever you had like characters moving or something, the in Walt Disney, actually, this is the, the time where the 12 principles were developed in this book, The Illusion of Life. In Walt Disney, they developed that, right? They were trying to satisfy Walt because Walt somehow figured out how to do animations that look really cool. And then other animators that were in the studio wanted to, they needed to upgrade their animation skills. And so... And uh, Walt will tell them like, no, 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 not like that. Like it, that animation looks weird. It looks fake. It, he didn't know how to say it, right? And then he would like, it needs to be more, more real. That's what he would say. And then, oh, okay, but, like it, it was too cartoony and then they needed to do it more real. And then they would go in and then redo the whole animation like this. And then Walt will take it and then he would go, no, this is this is too real. This is we're doing cartoons, and then they go, ah, okay, let me do it more and more cartoon. And they, they would go, they would animate again, okay, like this, and then what? No, this is too cartoony. We need we need it more real, and then it would ah, okay, we do it 
we do something and then he says that it's too cartoony and then we do it more real and then he says he's too real like what the heck does he want then and then what they arrived to was he wanted animations to be believable that is the keyword the animation has to be believable now we have other words for it the animation has to look organic when it doesn't look organic it looks stiff it looks like weird that's uh, other like when the animation of the character like it looks it doesn't look fluid like hey the animation looks like very tense and really weird movements sometimes that we do right so Organic, uh, Atharva, you're asking right there in the chat, uh, organic means how? Organic means that it feels like the character is alive. So if you look at this, the title is The Illusion of Life, because with the 12 principles, you can get your characters to feel as if they are alive. And organic means it has organs. It's a breathing living character make sense so that is what organic means like oh the movement looks so so i'm going to show you two animations right now probably you're you're like mm, i don't quite get it but okay i probably you're like i kind of get it i'm going to show you an animation and hopefully with this you're gonna go like that's what you mean by weird. That's what you mean by organic. So that's the best way to, to learn this. So I'm going to show you this animation, right? And by the way, if you download, let me just, uh, I already sent you the, the link. I'm going to post it again. So you guys can, for those of you who have, haven't downloaded, download Cartoon Animator right now and then let me share with you a link where you can download some project files that i'm going to be using okay these are some of the project files if you go to the project files you can also open this video i'm going to open it as a as a project inside cartoon animator right here i just click and drag and look you can also open it in your own computer if you download this file, you download the file and you're gonna get these folders, right? This is the file. Let me just open it. You have these four folders, right? So if you go to Cartoon Animator 4, you're gonna find project one. That's the one that I have open. And now I want, I'm going to play this animation. And one, there's an animation at the top. So I'm going to type on the chat top. That is for me when I'm selecting top or bottom, right? So you're going to tell me which one has the 12 principles applied, the top or the bottom, all right? I'm going to play it. It's going to play a couple of times. I just activated the loop right here at, at the bottom, and I'm going to play it, and you tell me, all right? Ready, set, go. Which one do you think has the 12 principles? Type top if you think is the top or type bottom if you think is the bottom animation so we have some answers we einstein you're saying a top 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 very good exactly the top animation this one is the one that has the 12 principle very good very good shivani vivek pratik uh patrick ta uh, atharva anasup brit Nikhil, Joseph, very good, very good. That's the correct answers, exactly. The top, right? <laughs> Alvaro, you say the top, obviously. Yeah, why? Because the bottom one looks like she's kind of floating or sliding. And it doesn't look like there's, there's no gravity in here. This one is not believable. But if I look at the top one, that one, is very believable. It feels as if there's gravity, right? I'm going frame by frame. Look, there's gravity in here, right? Like both of them are using the same key poses, right? 
And but in this one, she starts falling and then she catches herself with this leg because there's gravity. She's she's has some weight, right? And then she takes a couple of steps, like a, a little jump in the middle, and then she presents herself again, and then she tries to balance. And on the bottom, she's just kind of ghosting her way through that, right? Like right here, they're almost the same, but then ooh, she's kind of floating. Like, like she doesn't look like she's dancing. Like what the heck is going on with this foot? It's floating, right? So I'm here to tell all of you, after this webinar, all of you are going to be able to do an animation just like this one on the top. And not only that, I can tell you, it's a lot of fun to do this, even though it's very short. It's like a couple of seconds. Let me play it. One. Okay, like two seconds, right? Two seconds, very short animation, but it's so much fun to just do this. Ah. All of you can do this. And that's exactly what I want to explain in this webinar. This is the, your takeaway. And you also have a couple of files here to help you. And also you have more examples in here. If you were not able to see this like very fluid, then you can just go to this link. Let me just post it again. And open this animation, right? It's the same. Now that is the the main idea of the 12 principles. Now, I want you to take a look at this, even though this has the same key poses. Look, this is the same pose for both of them. And then this is the, the next key pose. And then this is the next one, right? They have the same key poses, the same, right? But what's happening between those key poses is very different. The in-betweens are what's making the whole difference, all right? Okay, so far so good. I'm watching the chat. And so let's get it started. And now I'm going to start talking about the 12 principles, not uh, the whole 12 principles uh, at the end of this, this uh, webinar. I'm going to say give you a link where you're going to have access to a free course of the 12 principles of animation, right? And then I see Vivek like, oh, sir, I can't draw. Well, good for you in Cartoon Animator 4. My friend, you don't have to draw. I didn't draw any of that, by the way. All of that is from a pre-made character. So that's super cool. Extra points for the Revolution team on doing this software because you don't have to draw. Like you can't draw, this is the software for you. So here's the thing. I'm going to give you the four most used principles of animation, right? And again, at the end, I'm going to give you a link where you're going, you're going to have free access to a complete course on the 12 principles in Cartoon Animator. So you can test it with a free trial. How, how does that sound? Pretty cool? Yeah, Mark, pretty cool. All right, <laughs> let's continue. So I'm going to share with you the four most used principles, right? Principles, just as a little demo. The first one is slow in and slow out. I think that's the most important one. Slow in and slow out. Slow in and slow out. This is the most if you forget everything uh, uh, of, from this webinar, just take this one home and embrace it. All your animations are going to improve with only this, slow in and slow out. Let me explain to you what slow in and slow out means. For that, I'm going to open a software. Yes, Brian is exactly is in or is out. Very good. And Atharva is not like fade in and fight out but it has kind of something similar. So I'm going to hopefully explain this very clearly, but it's exactly what you put there, Brian. Let me open a video editor and now I'm going to share my screen. 
while this is opening, let me just, I'm preparing something here in my computer. And all of you have access to this. Let me just go away here. Okay, so it looks like uh, Mark's display has frozen. He's kind of stuck in a weird position right there. Um, so hopefully we'll get him back in, in a moment here. Um, but for now, I guess um, I'll take over. I guess we can have a, have a little chat here, have a little uh, FaceTime with each, with each other here. Um, I, I guess what we can do is we can actually get an advance on the, on the Q&A. So if you guys have any, any questions about, you know, Real Illusion products or, or what, uh, or Cartoon Animator 4, kind of, any of the uh, 12 principles of animation as well, you can uh, feel free to ask me. Um, I'll, I'll be answering some questions in the Q&A window. Um, yeah, if you have any, any, anything that pops up right now, we can just kind of have a little discussion, I guess. Well, uh, while Mark is, uh, whoops, just dropped my phone there. While Mark is uh, getting back online here. Um, there's a question from, or a comment, I guess, from Vivek mentioning, I can't, I can't draw well, sir. Um, yeah, I mean, like Mark just mentioned here, you don't really need to draw very well to uh, work with Cartoon Animator. It's basically, um, a lot of the stuff is preset. It's already it's already prepared there for you. So you don't really need to uh, draw that much. Obviously, if you want to create your own characters from scratch, that's what takes some drawing some drawing work. So, um, uh, okay, so that people are putting some stuff in the chat window here. Okay, we'll do some chat stuff. Uh, this question is from... Uh, Hold on a sec here. I'm using a trackpad right now, which is really annoying. Atharva seems like a lot of people are from India, so we're we're, uh, we're being taken over by uh, <laughs> the chat room is being taken over by India right now. Um, I guess it's uh, what Wednesday, Thursday morning there in India, so that's where we're, we're kind of doing a alternate uh, uh, time for the webinar. Um, this one's from Atharva. Is it necessary to read that book of Walt Disney? I mean, it's not totally necessary to be honest. I think, and Mark will tell you this as well. Uh, most of the stuff that I learned, most of the way that I learned uh, doing animation and, and using software is from, from YouTube videos. Uh, honestly, I, there's so many, so much free resources out there. Um, YouTube, YouTube videos uh, are one of the main ones that I use to just kind of get familiar with the uh, concepts of animation. There's lots of other, you know, courses that you can pay for ranging anywhere from like, you know, uh, $10 to thousands of dollars for a course. Um, of course, your quality of, of instruction may vary, but there's a lot of really good uh, free resources out there. And I just recommend, you know, taking a look at YouTube. That's the, that's the, the first place that I, uh, you know, pop over to when I want to learn about something is uh, YouTube. Unfortunately, they've taken away the dislike button, so you can't really tell if a, a tutorial is going to be really good when you start it off. Um, but uh, yeah, we'll go to the next one anyways. Um, next one here is a comment from Michael. When is CTA 5 expected and will it include a custom frame rate? Uh, for example, 24 frames per second. Uh, Cartoon Animator 5 is looking early next year, um, probably at this point. Uh, that's what we're thinking. Uh, this year is the year of 3D. As you may be aware, we're launching our um, Cartoon, or sorry, not Cartoon Animator, Character Creator 4 and iClone 8. Um, that'll be early next month. So I'm busy at work. Uh, making tutorials for that right now. I'm involved, engrossed in 3D, uh, the 3D aspect of animation right now. Um, yeah, CTA 5, I think is early next year, I believe. So we still got a lot of time. Uh, there's there's going to be a couple more versions of uh, Cartoon Animator 4 that come out before that's launched. So um, yeah, but, but, oh. next one. The animator survival kit is also a good one to read. That's from Brian uh, Brian Norfolk. Uh, the animator survival kit. I have seen that um, around. Um, I haven't read it myself, but again, yeah, there's there's tons of books available. I think when I started at Real Illusion, 
Um, actually, I got gifted a book from the CEO about, uh, you know, animation uh, concepts and stuff. So that was, gosh, that was about 10 years ago now. So it's been a while. Uh, yeah, that's a good one to recommend. I think the Animator Survival Kit. If you have a link for that, um, Brian, maybe you, you can throw that in the chat window as well, just so other people can have a look at it. I don't want to throw links or I don't want to go searching through the internet right now uh, while I'm answering questions. But uh, um, this one, next question is from Ilayaraja. Il 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 Hopefully I pronounced that right. Um, he uh, mentions, can I use the 12 principles to 3D animation? Yeah, absolutely. Um, especially the one that Mark just talked about, ease in and ease out. Um, it's very important to uh, you know use that in 2D and 3D. Oh, there's Mark again. Marco, are you back on back online? Can you hear me? Yes. Can you hear me? Yep. All good to go. Uh, sorry. <laughs> Little internet problem there. My internet died, and I kind of using wi Wi-Fi from my my cell phone. But, oh no uh, way! Is that going to charge you a lot of money? I I do have a plan, so it it's okay. So. Okay, because in Canada we have like really crappy internet plans <laughs> for for phones. It's like like two gigabytes is like two hundred dollars. Not some not 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 that crazy, but it's pretty pretty close. So uh, hopefully, uh, and I mean uh, later the internet is is coming back. So sorry sorry well, about that. I would like explain then. Where did everybody go? Why is everybody so quiet? Nobody's talking. And, ah, I'm the one who <laughs> fell. <laughs> Alrighty. Right so on. where did I left off? Uh, around probably explaining the movement, this one? I think you were just at ease in and ease out. Um, okay, ease in. Yeah. Well, uh, uh, did I get to this point where I explained this? Yes. Okay. Let me open the chat. But uh, okay, then let me let me continue from here. Then, <laughs> then, then I, I just gave the whole class and <laughs> I was talking to no one. Okay. So <laughs> for for easy in and ease out, you can see that I recorded myself. Let me just show you. Uh, for those of you who download this file, the Twelve Principles Project Files, you go to footage and then you have this video, right? which you can open in any video editor. I'm using Premiere Pro. And in here, you can see that it's just a video of me moving this, the hand from one side to another. That's it, right? Nothing special, just from one side to another. Very simple. Now, this naturally, I want to illustrate you that naturally, if I start going frame by frame, look at what's happening. Naturally. My body is doing a slow in and slow out. Let me explain to you what slow in and slow out means. Slow in means that instead of moving this object like this, like a robot, it slows into the movement like, like this. Like I'm going to move from this side very slowly and then picks up speed and then it slows out at the end. Right? Exactly. Decelerate is like accelerate and then decelerate at the end. Right? This, that is called slowing and slow out. Okay? So I'm going to go here and look at naturally if I play it, it has slow in and slow out, right? And so if I go like this, frame by frame, you can see that naturally starts picking up speed and then it uh, loses the speed at the end and then accelerates in, whoop, it goes very fast in the beginning and then it goes like decelerates at the end, right? That is slow in and slow out. That when you add slow in and slow out, you make your animation feel as if it was someone who is alive like me, I have organs in my body that start picking up speed, right? So if you go to Cartoon Animator, okay, let me open Cartoon Animator. I'm going to create a new document. And here, uh, Vivek, I believe it was you who said, ah, but I cannot draw. Well, guess what? I'm not going to draw and I'm going to bring a character without drawing anything. 
So I'm just opening some uh, folders in here, and then I'm going to bring Philip right here. Click and drag. I cannot draw, but I can click and draw. I mean, click and drag. <laughs> click and drag, voila. This is a character done for me by Relution. Awesome, and I can use it for all my projects. And now what I'm going to do is, actually, let me just show the, the, key, the keys that I'm pressing so you can keep track. I had this character selected, and then I press K, and this brings the 2D motion key editor. By the way, my dogs outside are starting a party. They're starting to bark like, wah, wah, wah. so hopefully that won't bother anyone. Just imagine there's some <laughs> dogs of some neighbors and not mine. But anyway, you can also open this by going to this button right here to the motion key editor or pressing letter K. I find it faster to press letter K. So if I have this character, let's have him kind of in a relaxed position, right? And then I want him to kind of wave with this arm, right? Like this. Let me just change. By the way, uh, I'm going a little bit fast. I'm going to press letter S and this brings the sprite editor. And then I click the hand. Now let's have a hand that is facing us. Now th that's facing the opposite side. This one, that's it's all the last hand, number 29. Okay, so I'm going to have this character move his arm like this, right? And I want it to look organic. So I'm going to do first a quick animation, really simple. Uh, that's the starting position. I'm in frame one. And now I'm going to open this, show the timeline, or I can press F3, right? And then let me expand a little. And I want to start doing an animation in here. Now, in here, you can see a ton of stuff. I'm going to ignore everything. And on the top, I'm going to press where it says motion. That's the one that I'm interested in, right? This one that says motion, and then it says motion, transform. Okay, let me pause right here because if you've never used this software, you probably feel like this is the cockpit of an airplane and it's like, oh my God, there's so many buttons. There's so many stuff thrown at my eyes. I cannot take it. So I hopefully I'm going to be guiding you and hopefully you're going to be able to focus on just a few things. In this case, I just want you to focus on, oops, let me, is it, let me use the free hand, the pen, this one, okay is I want you to focus only on this motion and transform this track right here. And also you get that by pressing, let me move this, by pressing this button right here that says motion, right? Okay, so right now the cursor is on frame one. I'm going to move to frame 30 and then move this a little bit to the side and then go back to frame 60 and then move back, right? Right now, actually, I'm going to take this, the, let me just explain. This one is going to be a copy of this, copy and then paste it here, right? So I just select this one, press Control C, select this last one and then press Control V. And now I have this animation. Right now, this, is stiff. This is not organic. This is stiff. Look, I play it. That is very stiff. I'm going to finish the animation right there, going to the properties, and then change the total to 60. And just to have the loop. Look, it goes like this, it goes from one side to another, and it's very, very stiff. Why? Because there's no slow in and slow in, like and it, it feels weird. So this is where Walt would say, it has to be more believable. That's not believable. It feels stiff. So here's how you can make it on stiff or organic. It's very simple. And in Cartoon Animator, all of you can do it.
You, all you have to do is select all the keyframes in here in transform, and then you right click and then transition curve. And in here is where someone was talking about is in and is out. So you do that by clicking on smooth, right? That's all you have to do. It's done. Now that I select that, look. Ah, look at that. Woo. Now it has a slow in and slow out and it feels way more organic, right? Very, very simple. Very simple. That's all you have to do. And that is how you do slow in and slow out. Now I'm going to show something more advanced. I'm, actually, I'm going to save this project and also deliver it to you guys. Let me just go here to this and then save it here. And I'm going to update this. Okay, so this is CISO uh, Philip Wave Hand. I'm gonna update that same link. The same link I just shared is going to be updated so you can have that also. Okay, so you will have this one, the Philip Wave. Now I'm going to show this animation that has a very simple character animation of the character doing this. And actually, let me, that, that's the animated part. All of you can open it. But before that, let me just go to this one. And I'm going to show you an animation without slow in and slow out. It's just a character lifting his arms and then ah, do, trying to be intimidating. Let me play it. That is right now it's stiff. It doesn't have, it has all the motion, but it doesn't have slow in and slow out, right? Right now it feels stiff. Now let's add a little bit of slow in and slow out and also a little bit of more uh, power to his motion. You're gonna see something really cool in here. Let me play it. Really nice. Now this one feels a little bit more organic. And I want to share with you something else that I did here. And that is the character, instead of just doing, let me show you this one. In, when you're raising your hands, this is a very weird way to raise it through, through the sides like this. Like if I tell you like, just raise your arms, I bet, like without thinking, I bet you're not going to do this because you can see that he's raising his arms to the sides. Let me stop sharing so you can see an example in here. And look, when I raise, actually I'm going to change to another camera that it, it has a more open lens, less quality, but hopefully I can explain myself a little bit better in here. So the character, you can see that he's doing this, right? This is very, very uncomfortable for me, like this. Raising my hands to the side. This is a little bit straining, right? And so this, this is weird. I, I, I won't, unless I'm doing jumping jacks, but this is weird. If I was to raise my hands, I do this. Look at this, look, look. my hands go towards the camera like that, right? So in this one, I had the character do this. This is way more natural. And then, uh, right? It, so this is a very big difference. And I want to show you how you can do, give this effect of the hand feeling like it's going towards the screen. That is called foreshortening. So in Cartoon Animator, and let me just switch to this camera so I don't forget this one already. In Cartoon Animator, you do that by doing this. Look, look at how this worked. He's like this and the hands just become a little bit shorter. Let me show you how you can do that. I'm going to open a new document again and bring that character, which takes me one, two, three, four, five, five seconds. So instead of drawing something, drawing it will probably take me like 10 minutes. This took me five seconds. So this is awesome. And now the, let me bring a background. 
because this one is kind of very, very good. Yeah, so I can see it better. All righty. So I have this character, right? And I'm going to move his hand if I was doing that animation. The thing is, most people would just take the hand and do this, but this movement is not organic because we don't raise our hands like that. So if I wanted to go from here, let's say from here, let me open this, click on motion, and then click on frame 30, and then raise his hand all the way here. This is not natural. So in the middle, all I do is this. I'm going to bring this hand, uh, let me rotate a little bit, like this, right? And then I want to give the effect as if, as if the hand is going towards us. So for that, I just disable the constraints right here on the motion key editor. Just click where it says constraints, make sure it's off. And then look at this. You can move the hand closer. And this gives the sensation as if the hand and the arm are going towards the screen and then keeps going up. Actually, let me delete <laughs> this keyframe. I'm going to delete it. And then on here, I'm going to complete this animation like so. Right? So now look, this is as if, as if it was going towards us, right? And of course, I would change in here, I would change the, the sprite so it gives this effect. Let me just change to another fist. Which one is the one that I used? Okay, like this, I think that works. And then from here, we can change to, let me just find another angle. No, not that one. The palm should be facing us. No, not exactly that. Okay, this one. That one works but around here. So look, look at that. Now this looks more organic, right? But now we have this that is still very mechanical. So I'm going to do something really, uh, I'm not going to explain in detail, but in here, I'm going to use accelerate for this one on the second frame, accelerate, and then on the next frame, decelerate. And that gives me a, a slow in and slow out. Look, this feels much more realistic, right? And by the way, let me, the first frame is going to be this position, like this. Really nice, look at that. That feels much more organic, right? Okay, so let me, let's move forward. That's slow in and slow out and also taking into account organic movement, right? Okay, Brian, I'm going to repeat really quick what I said. When I have a movement like this, right? Where I have a, a frame in the middle, I don't use smooth because look, if I take all of them and I use smooth there's going to be like a little stop just a smooth look it it feels like there's a stop in the middle right it feels weird like whoop whoop right from here whoop 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 so the speed is going like this super fast and then slow and then super fast and then slow and what i want is the the movement to feel like this whoop uh well, let, well, let me try it again to accelerate, room and then decelerates. Yeah, the speed, I want it to feel like that. And for that, or actually another way to put it would be like this, it speeds up and then it slows down on the edge. If, I, if that's what I want, then Brian, here it is. I'm gonna say it one more time. You click on the second one. This one is going to have accelerate, right? And the second one, hopefully with this would be super clear, would be decelerate, right? The, first, this, the second one is accelerate. The third keyframe is decelerate. And with that, we have a slow in and slow out of the entire thing. 
accelerate and then this one decelerate hopefully that that was very clear all right yes very good and how do you open the 2d motion key editor which is you you have the character selected you just press k that's the motion key editor very very simple and to open those those things where i'm editing you go to the top just make sure you click on motion and then where it says transform you right click and then transition curve and that opens the these uh, transition curves all right okay let's keep moving forward hopefully i i don't mind going slow right because <laughs> i'm also learning uh, new stuff all the time and sometimes the teacher goes super fast and I'm like, whoa, 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 wait, slow down. <laughs> so uh, just type it in the chat. I'm watching the chat here like, oh, Mark, can you say that again? And I will gladly do this. Well, that would probably extend the tutorial a little bit, but it would guarantee that you actually learn something. And that's that will make me happy. All right. So that's one thing that the next principle is anticipation let me go and put it here so right now we have slow in and slow out and the second most important i'm gonna uh, pick up the speed a little bit in the explanation anticipation anticipation and i think in the next 10 minutes we can cover the other three principles this one is the most important I wanted to extend this one because it's the most important, but the other three, we can uh, understand them uh, hopefully very easily. Anticipation just means that whenever you're gonna do anything, you kind of need the character to prepare before she does anything. I'm gonna show you an example in here of a character jumping, right? Like when you jump, you don't have the character like just fly away like ah, that you want the character to do to prepare because there's gravity and then you need to prepare and then you jump so look at how weird this hero this girl looks when she jumps without anticipation this is an animation without anticipation let me play it ah, she's it feels like she's being pulled now Again, if you cannot see this properly or if the video is lagging, I'm posting this again, the, this link, so you can go to video number four and just play it, right? Yep. That doesn't work. That's not a character jumping. You're like, what? And that's what I'm doing. Like, I have the character there, and then uh, in the next frame, the, the next key pose is, she jumping away, right? The same I have in here, but this time I haven't, look at how differently this looks. Wow, that makes a huge difference. This one is jumping. Why? How do I know she's jumping? Because in this one, I know there's one thing called gravity. In, in this world, this is giving me the illusion of life, the illusion of this character being a real being, because in her world, there's physics, there's gravity, and she has to, she has to fight against gravity to jump away, right? That's why she's getting this energy. Whoom, and jumps away, right? Okay, so that is for anticipation. Now, let's go to another, like most... Uh, uh, Actions that you do, all you have to think is, okay, how can I prepare my character to do that? Like, for example, if, if my character was going to pick this marker, instead of just going like that, like, that's what most beginners do. If you really want your animation to look really cool, you could go, like your character prepares to pick this, like it can go, and then she picks it, right? It, it's a little bit more interesting. In the full course, you're gonna see more examples of anticipation. Now let's go to the next one, which is the, the third principle is the follow through. Follow through and overlapping action is the same name for the same principle, over 
lapping action. This one is very difficult to animate in Cartoon Animator 5, but I'm going to show you some terms that you can, I mean, Cartoon Animator 4, some, some concepts that uh, are going to help you improve your animations, right? And just so you know, Cartoon Animator 5 coming up later this year, this thing, the follow through is automatic. It's done for you. It's so amazing. Okay, so let me explain to you what follow through means. I'm going to show you two objects and you're going to tell me which of those two objects has follow through and which one doesn't have followed through. I'm going to uh, I'll show you option A. I'm going to type it in the chat. This would be option A, right? This is option A. I'm going to move this from side to side. And then I'm going to show you option B and I'm going to move it from side to side. Which one has follow through? Just try to use your intuition, A or B. Okay, we have a couple of answers. Ilaria, Ilayarya, Ilayarya. B, B, Shivani, Adesh, Athar. Yeah, B, 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 Vivek, all of you are saying B. Very good, yes. Very, how, how, I haven't explained the concept. How do you know it has followed through? Intuitively, there's something about it. This doesn't have follow through and follow through means that you're dragging the movement and this is not dragging. It's like the tip, the, the part where I'm holding and the tip of the object are moving at the same time. It's stiff, right? And then this one, is dragging it, the, the top, I'm moving it. And then in slow motion, this lower part is going like whoop, is dragging and it's following through after the movement. And even after I finish, there's an overlapping action, which means that I stop moving and then this one whoop, like, oh, we stop moving. And then it bounces back. Why? Actually, one of the things mentioned in the chat earlier, chat, inertia. Inertia is parts of, it's a part of physics. So when you add this, right, your animations are going to look very cool. But yes, it's too difficult now. Like if you have a character and it has hair and it has this little bouncing, it, it adds a lot of complexity. But if you give yourself the time to do it, your animations mwah, are going to increase in quality. Let me show you one of the, the winners of the contests in Cartoon Animator 4, right? Let me show you, uh, he's Francesco from Italy. And let me just get it here. I'm, I'm trying to get the Relution site right here. And in the show reel, you can go to this video and I want you to notice that one of the things that makes this video, I'm going to mute it, very interesting is the little bouncing things and the follow through on the hair. Look, I'm gonna play it. Look, there's very slight, you can see the hair bouncing, right? And it's because there's follow through in there. Like even in this, like, very, very subtle, but it makes it look really cool, right? Let, let me just go back to where the boy is talking. And whenever he moves, the hair moves a little bit. And it's not too much big of a deal, right? But whenever he does a really complicated movement, Francesco took the time to do this little bouncing effect, and it looks so cool. Now, again, a little spoiler for any of you interested, Cartoon Animator 5 being released next, uh, this, this year actually, uh, it's going to have that as an automatic feature. All you have to do is do the animation, forget about the hair, just rig something in there and then, whew, mwah, I love it, I'm so excited about that. But that is follow through and overlapping action and let's finish, uh, by the way, let me, show you another thing, a concept that you can apply in Cartoon Animator 4, part of overlapping action. And that is not only do you want to add 
all like a kind of ending to your movement, but there's this thing called the triple A, which is anticipation, action, and aftermath. And this aftermath is a form of follow through. And I want to show you that example because you can do that in Cartoon Animator 4. And also the, the is in and is out, actually that one is almost automatic in here in Cartoon Animator. You just have to switch it and on the on the settings right like with the transition curves but yes actually in there you're going to up, i believe one of the settings is that you can have it to every time automatically give you smooth right so let me just go to this right here no where is it here and go to this video where we have anticipation action and aftermath but i'm in here, there's going to be only the action. This is a bad example because it only has action. Look, it's the character pointing to himself. That's it. Just the character pointing to himself. And this one is an example of a, a good animation that has anticipation, action, and aftermath. Not only does it have this action, but it also has anticipation and aftermath. And you can see from the thumbnail in the aftermath, we also animated the face so it looks like a little bit cocky. Let me play it. Look, there's an anticipation before he points to himself, right? So he kind of, ah, and then like he gets some air, right? Ah, and then he points to himself. Like he goes a little bit up and then, ah. And there's this thing called the moving hold. Look, after he points to himself, he moves a little bit, look right? That is called the moving hold. It's part of uh, the concept of following through. And now I'm going to show you that animation without a moving hold. And it looks like he takes a picture chick, and it freezes, right? And when it's moving after, the, after he finishes the action, this is a moving hold. Boom. The action is finished, but he keeps moving slightly. Right, let's do, see a comparison. I'm going to just put it here. Ah, look at that. I'm going to maximize it. Can you see the difference? This one feels more organic because this one, but it's kind of frozen and then this one keeps moving a little bit, all right? And now I want to finish really quick with the, the last step. Uh, actually before i go to the last principle that i want to cover today which is timing i just want to take this thing like the main the main idea of the 12 principles is to have your animation look believable one of the things that make it believable is that there's physics in your universe that is what creates the illusion you want to create that illusion that whenever you're watching, like if I tell you, <laughs> this is a, like a, a weird exercise that uh, one of our teachers asked, well, like, what's this? And then most of you, like, what, what, what do we have in the screen, right? And then a, a lot of people would answer, okay, like a, a woman, right? That, that would be the answer. Like, yeah, it's a woman. All of us could, could oh, or it's a girl, or it's a redheaded woman, right? But actually, no, no, it's not. It's a drawing. <laughs> she would say, it's a drawing of a woman. But in our mind, this is creating such an illusion that we, we say, oh yeah, it's a woman and there's the, like the street and there's like some bricks. No, 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 it's none of that. This is a, a bunch of pixels thrown at you. <laughs> but it's creating that illusion of a person. And so if you really want to sell that illusion, you want to have some things into account. So in here, I want to show you this thing, right? right? This walk cycle that is badly done in Cartoon Animator. This is what most beginners do. This is sliding. Look at that. Those feet, the, the, the feet are sliding in here. This is not believable. And it's weird. Now I'm going to show you this exact walk cycle, 
but in a good way. Look, this one, I'm going to play it. This one looks, ah, there's friction. She's actually standing somewhere, right? Now, I'm not going to go into detail on this in the full course. You're going to have like more specific instructions on how to do this properly. It's pretty cool. Okay, so now let's go to the last. Let me open the chat again. The last one that I want you to learn today is timing. For timing, it's very simple to understand is this one, the timing is not so much about how fast or how slow. It has to do more with the rhythm of a movement, right? But, and yes, of course, that rhythm changes the speed of some movement. But I want to kind of illustrate how you change the timing and the timing inside Cartoon Animator is changed really easily. Look, I'm going to go back to this this animation, let me just go back to Cartoon Animator. This one that we already have, right? And if I wanted to change the timing of this, look, this character is like, ha raises his hand. And if I wanted to have this character do this slower and change the timing, I would do this. I would just take this keyframe right here, right? And right now the whole movement is taking this time. It's taking one second. 30 frames is one second, right? So if I wanted to do this slowly, I would just take this one and extend it to frame 30 right here. And this one putting it in the middle and also change these sprites in the middle like this. So all I did was move a couple of keyframes and that is changing the timing. Look, now it's going to be slower. You see? Let me play it again. Shoo, like this. Let me, probably this, this hand can change a little bit later. Yeah, like that. OK, look, very easy, right? And what if I wanted to do really fast? Then I would just bring all the keyframes and look, I'm not redrawing any, I'm not drawing anything. If you want to do this in traditional animation, then you have to be drawing and redrawing again and again. But in here now, I just made it super fast without redrawing anything. I just move a couple of things and I change the timing. Look, now it's really fast. Like, hey, what's up, man? Hello. This is me saying hi to Kai. Hey, Kai. Hello. Right? Or if I wanted to be more relaxed, again, I go back to how I had it in the beginning and I would just go, hey, hello, more relaxed, right? So yeah, exactly. The keyframes, you're moving them back and forth exactly like you would do the video effects in Adobe Premiere. Yeah, you change the timing, okay? So that's it. And okay, I kind of took one hour. I, I didn't want to take like too many hours all with the, the little technical difficulty. Thank you guys for the patience, All right? So that's it. Kai. Right. Hey, I'm back. Right on. Thanks a lot for that, Mark. Um, awesome stuff. All, all the basics of animation, very, very important to learn um, before you get started in anything. Um, and like, you know, we mentioned before those, those 12 principles of animation, um, check out that course. Uh, you get it with the, when you register for the free demo and uh, you'll probably, uh, learn a lot more this is just this is just the beginning of your animation journey yep. i guess yes and, um, and actually uh, uh did i get this right when they get the the free trial they get access to the the complete course of the 12 principles right so they can you, you with this you can start uh, like getting the hang of it like a full explanation in details with project files for you to practice so yeah you're gonna learn a lot right so yeah Awesome, right on. Uh, well, let, let's go into the uh, Q&A then. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, guys, if you have any questions, put those questions in the Q&A panel and we'll answer those. I did mention earlier, I think it was uh, Brian that uh, had asked about uh, Cartoon Animator 5. Now we are actually planning that for Q4 of this year. So 
end of this year, not early next year, like I mentioned. It may be delayed to early next year, but we uh, definitely want to try and get it uh, get it out to you guys by uh, end of this year. Uh, a lot of really cool Pretty stuff coming out. Stuff. Yeah, I'll, a lot of cool stuff. By, by the way, a lot of the principles are automated in there. There's another principle <laughs> not mentioned here called squash and stretch. It's mm. made so much easier in Cartoon Animator 5. It's so cool. Yeah, absolutely. There's It's way more flexible. Um, tons of improvements in, in Cartoon Animator 5. Um, you'll probably see some pre-sale stuff for that, I think, in the, in the fall. Uh, and some, you know, work in progress videos we always release uh, coming up to that. So uh, keep your eye on the YouTube channel, uh, probably from fall onwards, I think. And you'll see some cool stuff. All right, let's get to the Q&A then. Uh, thanks for uh, sticking with us, guys. We have a few questions already loaded up here. Oh, and there you go. First question from Michael. <laughs> when is Cartoon Animator 5 expected? And yeah, the um, the frame rate thing is is um, going to be included as well. So there's going to be uh, the addition of custom frame rates uh, export for, for a second export. Um, yeah, so just make sure you guys uh, just to put your questions in the Q and A pa uh, uh, panel, not in the chat window, because um, I don't want to be answering from two different uh, areas. Just going to do them in the Q and A in in, in the in order here. Uh, question from Gabriela Nalali. Martinez Kirill, <laughs> that's a pretty cool name. Uh, I have Cartoon Animator version 3.3. Can I upgrade it to version four? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so Gabrielle, if you wanna do that, the way that you do it is uh, make sure you're logged into your Reillusion account on the website and just go to the page and, and go to the, you know, the buy button or whatever. And if you're logged into your account, it will give you, it'll automatically give you the uh, upgrade uh, price. Yeah, yeah, upgrade price as opposed to the, the full price. Yeah, yeah the, the full price is like, you pay this, but when you already have the card, you pay like much, much less. Yeah, yeah. Um, kind of like a loyalty reward. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, the next question is from anonymous attendee. Dun, dun, dun. Um, <laughs> anonymous, so mysterious. Uh, how do the, how to do 3D animation like two characters fighting? Um, Interesting. There's a lot of ways. I mean, maybe you want to be more specific about which aspect of the fight. You know, if you have a one character slapping the other, you know, <laughs> uh, there's there's anticipation in that, right? There's anticipation and follow through, like the uh, concepts Mark was describing. The anticipation you have to, of course, reach back for yes. the slap. You know. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> and also, uh, probably one of the things that would help you a lot in there, Mister Mysterious Anonymous Attendee is this let me just go to resolution because here in the content store like if you go to add-ons where is it the content store or the marketplace you can go to motion right and in there you can find fighting like fighting clips but there's also like uh if you get for iClone that's another software fight motion fight motion clips right you can find a ton of, of interesting uh, fighting and action sequences, right? Like motion, right? Male fighter. And these are really cool, right? Like there's, this, uh, there's a way to bring a lot of these movements to, to Cartoon Animator, but uh, you need a plugin. What, what's the plugin, Kai? Uh, the live link from uh, live link. Motion Live, yes. I think it's called. Yeah, from and then you can to put Cartoon Animator bring those to to cartoon i mean sometimes the the character might do some weird stuff you just have to correct that couple of stuff but it saves so much time so yeah that's what i that I, what i would think yeah i mean uh, just like mark mentioned you can get all those 3d motions and apply them to your uh, 2d characters in cartoon animator 4 that uh, aspect of the program is going to be even uh, improved even further Yes. in Cartoon Animator 5, so you can look forward to that uh, much more accurate and, and uh, will require less tweaking. But uh, yeah, it's something to really look forward to for sure. Uh, now, I was going to find here in the uh, plugin center. Yes. Uh, the, I'm, not sure, I'm trying to find the, the actual page for the, the motion link. Oh, here we go. Okay. Yeah, in case, in case anyone's uh, wondering, I'll, I'll throw this into the chat window. This is the, uh, whoops, oh, yo. This is the uh, Motion Link plugin that uh, we were mentioning that allows you to transfer stuff from iClone, uh, 3D animations from iClone over into uh, Cartoon Animator. Let me just find my chat window there. There we go. 
All right. So that's the, that uh, I put that in awesome. that link in the chat window for you guys there. Yep. Yes. Uh, actually, let me just show it here because it's pretty cool. Like sure. in here is, these are like 3D motion clips applied inside cartoon. Look at that. So it's pretty cool. So yeah, that, that is very, very, very cool plugin. Yeah. And, there, and there's, there's a motion library for iClone, like, like thousands and thousands and thousands of motions. So, <laughs> yeah. It's like, like literally unlimited motions if you don't want to do your, your own animation. Or you can even take those animations and you can customize them in your own various ways as well, too. So, um, okay. So I think he kind of mentioned animating like Japanese animation, like fights in Naruto. <laughs> ah, okay. Yeah, the, the, actually, for that, uh, f like fights in Naruto, that is like, incredibly probably you're looking let me see if if i'm getting this right you're you're asking about like epic naruto stuff right let me just see if this is what we're talking about i'm going to just open uh, i know actually some of the animators who animated in naruto and for like probably you're asking for something super epic like this right okay that is something that you probably uh, need maybe if, if this is what you want like ah, those shots and everything probably you want to invest this takes like years 10 years to draw like learning how to draw and then learn how to do all that action etc cetera, etc cetera, and then do it frame by frame like after 10 years you take like a whole month just to do that little sequence that that's it all of that, like a whole month. I know because I know this guy. And uh, yeah, like if you're like, oh, yeah, yeah, that's too much. Probably you want something, you, you can get something easy, easier, but you can get in the next couple of days with, with Cartoon Animator. And which, that would be using those motions and then get creative, get some shots like close-ups. And so, yeah, that's what I would do. Yeah, I mean, that stuff is obviously frame by frame, which does take yeah. quite a bit longer. <laughs> but the learning curve is like at least super fast is like five years. So five years from now and then a ton of ton of hours sitting down and doing that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, that's the traditional uh, traditional way to do it. Hey, question from another Kai. Uh, Kai Dell. Hey, Mark, Hi. I've learned a lot from you today. You don't see that too often. Thank you. I was wondering if you have a recording of this live session to send to us. Uh, yes, um, Kai, we are recording this uh, session, so uh, we'll send, a, send you off a link after the webinar uh, so you can review everything on your own time. Uh, and you're very welcome, Kai. There's two Kais now. Whenever I say Kai, we don't know which Kai. Denada. <laughs> Denada. Yeah, you're Spanish. Uh, let's see here. From Shabam. Sh 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 um, sir, will I see the recording of this webinar? Yep, same question. Um, we are, are recording this, guys, so you can uh, check it on your own time. We'll email it to you later. Okay. Uh, question from Brian. In Cartoon Animator 5, will I be able to apply 360-degree motions to custom characters? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you will be able to do that. So. Yeah, and actually, let me just... If you just open that link that Kai shared, you can see how that applies in here, like, like just in this demo. I'm going to just leave it here so you can see in one point how you do some adjustments, right? Because all of that, like this character, they just did like a 360 rotation in that motion, right? And let me just move, wait, in here, look. In here, you can start adjusting the angle and how it's affecting, right? So it's pretty cool. So yeah, you can, it's, that plugin is really useful. You can adjust all of that, all right? Yeah, we should have a webinar on that. I think that's some some pretty cool stuff. There there are tutorials out there <clears throat> uh, on the uh, YouTube channel and on our learning center for Cartoon Animator where you can learn more about that. Uh, again, just just Google like uh, or search on YouTube Motion Link Car Cartoon Animator and you should be able to find it. Um, or again in the learning center as well. Uh, the learning center is just off the main page. Um, if you're on the Cartoon Animator page, there's a learn section. I, uh... I can I can share really quick here. Yeah, sure. And when you go yeah. to let me go to Cartoon Animator, which was in here. If you go, this is in Cartoon Animator four. 
you just go to learn and there's like tutorials, online manual. This is the, the course webinar. So you just go to tutorials and in there you can see all of this. Or if you are in here in Cartoon Animator, you can also go to help and then video tutorial. And it will also open that same link. So it's very easy. Cool. Yep. Uh, lots of learning stuff. You might uh, hear my voice in a couple of those videos um, <laughs> talking about all the yeah, actually, cool features. Uh, Kai is my mentor. Kai sensei. <laughs> oh, get out of here. <laughs> That's uh, where, where I actually learn how to use it. <laughs> yeah, you might get annoyed with my voice after like, I think mean, it's probably what, like 300, web, 300 tutorials I've done on that stuff. <laughs> Hundreds, hundreds. Um, let's go to the next question here from Darian. Uh, how does this compare to Toon Boom Studio? Also, can you import WAV files for dialogue and music into the software? Um, Toon Boom obviously has been around for much longer. Um, and Toon Boom is kind of like the industry standard for, you know, very detailed frame by frame uh, animation. Uh, again, it's, it's, a, it's more a lot more expensive, uh, but it does a lot more stuff in terms of the uh, very professional um, customized aspects of animation like the frame by frame stuff and you know there's a lot of features there um that are you know used for like multi-million dollar studios and stuff um two moves actually based in canada where i'm where i'm at here um yes. but yeah i Sorry, actually want to share something in here like uh in toon boom you can have like way more advanced rigs etc but you uh, this is for you to test but honestly, the rigging system is so complicated. So in, look at that. That it's a, just a character. And yes, it's it has a very advanced, but oh my God, the process is incredibly draining and you can get confused. Is is like you take hours just getting and then finally you do the rigging. And with Cartoon Animator, the like the what I would say, like, okay, what do you want? Are you looking for super high quality where you invest hours and hours for an animation? Or are you looking for a decent animation that you do really fast and really low cost, right? Toon Boom, I would recommend it. Do you have a studio with a bunch of animators? Probably Toon Boom is a good choice. But if you're alone or it's you and two more friends and you, hey, let's start a YouTube channel like really fast and let's create an episode every week. Cartoon Animator is uh, the best choice because you do everything super fast and super low cost, right? That's that's the comparison. Yeah, very well put. I think that's, you pretty much nailed it there. Um, and like Mark mentioned, the learning curve is quite a bit steeper for, uh, for Toon Boom for sure, just because of all the uh, advanced technical aspects in it there. Um, second part of Darian's question though was actually about importing wave files for dialogue and music. Yeah, you can do that in Cartoon Animator. Um, you can do it for character uh, lip syncing. Yes. Uh, for music and everything like that. So, um, ba -ba -ba. Gabriella says, can I jump directly to version five? Uh, yeah, there'll, there'll be an upgrade price from, actually, no, I think the upgrade price from like, if you go from like three to five, I'm not sure if that would actually be an upgrade read price there would be a, probably a discount but i'd have to talk more Check. with the sales department to see how they figure out their sales algorithms and stuff like that you know um so i can't really give you a solid answer on that but i, I assume it would be like a little bit of a discount just not <laughs> that, as much. that's kind of uh, above our pay grade right like, yeah exactly that's, that, that's not for us to decide so <laughs> uh, but, but yeah we just animate just let all the let all those suits do all the pricing <laughs> <laughs> we're the animators and teachers <laughs> yeah exactly uh, okay, question from uh, another question from Darian. Uh, I work with Adobe Illustrator. I'm wondering if I can create an Illustrator and the shapes and import into the software. Yes, you can. You can do that. Uh, you can use Illustrator. Um, the, the actual format that you have to um, import into Cartoon Animator is PSD. Yeah. Um, just be aware of that. But you can do all of your work in Illustrator. And um, I've been in touch with some developers who use Illustrator um, for yeah. their character creation. Um, some and, people and prefer that. And actually in Illustrator, just make sure that you have the parts in different layers and then you say export it as a PSD and then you, you get a template and et cetera, et cetera. So, yeah. And yeah. by the way, uh, for Cartoon Animator 5, you can now, you're going to now be able to put the Illustrator and import it directly to, to Cartoon Animator. You just export it as SVG, but you uh, export the vector. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, good point. Um, all right, that's 
does it for Darian's question there. Uh, on, on the stop, on the stop, uh, do the characters come automatically with the application and is there animals and other stuff? Uh, yeah, there's, there's a bunch of embedded characters that come with the free trial. Uh, I forget how many, there's maybe a dozen yeah. or so uh, free characters. Uh, they're all from various generations of cartoon animator. Uh, but it does come with a bunch of free characters. Um, so you can, you know, test out things, yeah. obviously. Uh, let me share my screen really quick. Like G3, you can see animals. There's this horse, a deer. There's a cat, Siamese cat, sheepdog, right? So yeah, there's there's like a, a bunch of them. Right? So yeah, it's... And there's also animals and other stuff, uh, as, as he And in as the well. marketplace, there's even more. So, yeah. yeah, yeah, tons of stuff in the marketplace car, uh, content store. If you don't want to create your own, you can always buy it. <laughs> uh adesh asks can we attain realism and animation uh absolutely it really depends on how much time you're willing to put into it right uh the more the more time you spend uh tweaking small aspects uh, of your of your motion the more realistic it's going to look like you can see uh like mark mentioned um i wouldn't call like naruto animation really realistic it's not very exaggerated um but i'm thinking what like what's a real real realistic animation i think if you look at like a lot of the old like classic like yeah. snow white and the seven dwarfs and stuff like that um man that that you know that stuff took like a team of like 100 animators like two or three years to do or something like that like uh, and it, you, the animation is just so smooth and so nice and and uh it's almost relaxing to to watch those it's old very Disney pleasant movies. to the eye like yeah it is yeah <laughs> it's not like uh the, the crazy dynamic animation we have uh today um, um but yeah teach their own uh again it's 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 really what you put into it to answer that question there oh vivek says i am that anonymous oh the masked man is revealed <laughs> vivek says, i, I am, am that anonymous, that an anonymous. <laughs> we, we don't really <laughs> care if you're anonymous or not you dun, really... dun, dun. that's yeah. the <laughs> right Good, nice to meet you glad to have you here vivek um, okay, let's go to the next one. Um, Rion had a lot of questions in the chat. Okay, so I think you were able to probably put them in now. Um, that's not, uh, well, I'll look through the list of questions to find more from Rion here. Uh, Darian again asks, can we hand draw in this software like pencil testing? Uh, can we gift this to a friend that has a tablet only? Um, so you, you can't really draw um, in Cartoon Animator 4. It's more of an animation software. Uh, we we have the pipeline to other other tools like uh, like Photoshop, obviously, um, Illustrator and, and uh, uh, GIMP, um, a lot of the free ones out there as well. As long as it can use PSD format, you can uh, draw in those other software. We want to focus more on the animation tools uh, yeah. for Cartoon Animator because it's you know we really want to focus on kind of making animation um, easier, uh, more accessible. You know, for people who may not be completely classically trained in animation, but they still want to tell their stories, they still want to, you know, create this kind of uh, um, project or whatever. We want to make it easier to access for them. Um, so it's yeah, this is mostly focused on the animation aspect. Um, and the second question, um, testing or sorry, gifting the friend uh, to a friend who has a tablet. It's not really. I wouldn't recommend using it on a tablet. Um, I'm not even sure that you can. Um, I've never really encountered anyone who uses Cartoon Animator 4 on a, on a tablet. Uh, I've seen, I use it on my laptop, um, which doesn't, you don't necessarily have to have a very awesome video card to use Cartoon Animator 4. Um, but tablet might be a little bit tricky because you're... Um, uh, yeah, do you refer, do you mean like uh, an iPad or something? I, yeah, have, have, you ever, have you ever encountered anyone using Cartoon Animator on that? No, it has to be probably it has maybe you're referring to one of those Windows tablets like the Surface or something. Yeah, probably if, it, wants okay. a, if it has Windows uh, uh, operating system, then you can download it and install it. Yeah, yeah, I, I think yeah, that um, the, the the laptop I'm on right now even um, is fairly similar to a Microsoft Surface in specs, and it, it handles it fine. It's a little bit slower, but uh, obviously the you must and get I like five thousand dollars. I want to elaborate a little bit more in what you mentioned in here, Darian, uh, on the pencil test. Uh, that is a term for for frame by frame. I'm guessing, Darian, that you know how to draw. So for that, you probably want to use other software that uses 
uh, frame by frame animation, right? Like I, I actually do both. I, I enjoy both. I enjoy fast production and also traditional animation, right? For traditional, I use Clip Studio Paint, but I must tell you, this takes like way, way, way more time to do. Like, for example, I'm doing this exercise, right? Of uh, I'm, I'm training to do really advanced animation. Like, like someone mentioned, like, uh, this is just some of the training. Let me actually use the, this is the, the study that I'm doing of a character doing a kick, right? But that, just that, it's not even finished. And it took like around, uh, what would it be? Probably like half an hour, one hour, I believe. No, I think one hour. And still, I haven't mastered it. And this is this would be probably what you you taught you mentioned as a pencil test. Okay, all of this takes way way too much time and is recommended only if you enjoy it, right? But again, cartoon animator is very different because this is not. Clip Studio Paint would not be a software to save time. This is a software to sit down for hours and hours and weeks, and then you go, you get two, three, if you're lucky, 10 seconds of animation. Mm -hmm. Cartoon Animator is you sit for one hour or two hours, and then you have a full episode for the next week, right? <laughs> so uh, again, you cannot do pencil test. You cannot draw in it. You can only get drawings and animate them. Why? Because Cartoon Animator is speed production. It's focused on getting it there. It's like, I have this idea. There it is. Let's post it on YouTube. And these ones are like, let's create a masterpiece that we're going to dedicate months in it, right? So it's two approaches. Both are valid, but just know Cartoon Animator is fast, speed, low cost. I'm curious, Mark, did you uh, use your own recording as a reference for that? You're, <laughs> no. you're yourself doing that kick? <laughs> no, I actually got uh, like a video from YouTube, a Taekwondo guy like ah, doing those kicks. It's pretty wild stuff. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, let's continue back with the uh, questions here. So from Rion, um, I hope Cartoon Animator 5 has the option to add sound of steps, raindrops, etc. Um, you can oh, do that. Okay. I mean, generally that kind of stuff, you'd want to do it in, in post-production, like your... Yes. Um, like Adobe Premiere or Sony Vegas or something like that. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, it's just more flexible to, to do that. I mean, you, you can add that stuff in Cartoon Animator, but uh, I generally try to add like a lot of the sound effects, uh, the final and sound effects in. Yeah. Later, Rian, you mentioned automatically. So yeah, probably it, like have all those options uh, automatically. Yeah, you, you can, uh, um, in, in our forums, I always mention this in, in tutorial or in webinars rather, in our forums, there's a wishful feature section in, in the forums, the Relusion forums that you can go. And if you want, if you want to add a if you want a feature added in the next version, um, you know, put your request there. Our, our development team browses that frequently. So, um, and if there's more demand for a specific feature, there's a better chance that uh, it'll be included in the next version. So, um, okay, next question was from Brian. Uh, adding 360 degree motions. I think this is a repeat question. I think we mentioned that already that you can add those uh, motions to custom characters in Cartoon Animator 5. Next one was the Rion. Um, Siraj, are we getting 12 principles of animation full course for free? If yes, how? Yes, you get it for free. Um, download the demo and register your account um, from that page we mentioned earlier. Uh, all free. Nothing yes. better than free learning. <laughs> yeah, that, and actually, I think it's pretty cool because you get the software, you get some training to really test the capacity like the power of that software and then you decide if you purchase it or not so i think it's a pretty cool deal absolutely um okay got a few more questions here one from atharva atharva how, how can we do exercise on regular account of animation how can we practice it after learning i mean uh, the, the as the old adage goes pra practice makes perfect you know the more the more you practice the more uh, I think, what is it? I read the other day that uh, like 11,000 hours of, of practice of something, any, anything like a, like ah, a yeah, violin like or a guitar, it's 11,000 10, hours. Hour yeah, it'll, it'll make yeah. you like a, like a professional. So you got a lot of hours. <laughs> if, you, if you just started, it's like, you know, every journey begins with a single step though, right? So. Yeah. Um, and actually elaborating a little bit more on that for you, Atharva, uh, like how do you practice after learning? 
in the course of the 12 principles, there's actual exercises that you can practice. And also what I would say is have a goal in your head, like a very specific goal. And I always ask my students, like, uh, what do you want to animate like? Like you pretend you already know how to do animation. Like, how do you want your animations to look like? And then hmm, I want my animation to look like that. And then point at some video and then find your way towards like reverse engineer it, right? If you're struggling, then I recommend you either invest time figuring out or invest money on courses and training and books, right? But you have to invest one, one of, of the two. So yeah, hopefully that helps Atharo. Absolutely. Um, next question is from Shivani. Can we give a... Uh... Can we give bones inside a character? Yeah, um, the characters all have bones. They have bone structures. Um, there's tutorials that uh, talk about, you know, the, the makeup of your characters, uh, their structure, um, how to add bones, how to create custom characters and all that stuff in the learning center. So, uh, yeah. uh, and also if you have other, other like types of characters that are not in there, like a monster or something, you can also add your bones to it and then animate it. The, any way you want. <laughs> Can we animate hentai? <laughs> sure. <laughs> it's not porn. It's art. Like they say <laughs> exactly. in the office, right? <laughs> well, yeah. I assume, yeah the imagination, man. <laughs> yeah, you know, uh, whatever, whatever you want, you know, whatever you, whatever you want to animate, that's all up to you. <laughs> we have people that do that with icon for sure. So, um, if you if you go to um, uh, like Second Life, for example. Uh, it's kind of like the, 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 the precursor to Metaverse, um, Second Life. Um, I remember we used to have an account where we walk around Second Life because, you know, people were creating kind of like uh, iClone okay. characters and there'd be people walking around naked and stuff and Second Life. And st <laughs> I'm not sure if that's going to happen in Metaverse, but uh, yeah, you can, uh, <laughs> there's people that do all that stuff and they make, they make a pretty penny doing it too. So, um, all right, we'll move on anyways. Uh, another question from Kai. Do we have an example of the Illustrate form that can be used in Cartoon Animator to share with us? I think maybe the Illustrator template. Is there a template for Illustrator? I um, think so, but it, I couldn't make it work. So in Cartoon Animator 5, they're fixing a lot of it. So okay. right now, I still recommend going through the exporting to PSD, and then from there, it's faster. Yeah, just uh, as long as you have the PSD format, that's the way to do it. But there is a template um, for the uh, Illustrator, but you were mentioning that you tried it and it wasn't too stable, Mark. Let me see, like, let's see. Uh, can you repeat the question? Uh, you, you're, you're mentioning that you tried the um, uh, template. Uh, so in, in the I, learning, I just I don't, I just took I don't have here. it here. I had it in a previous computer, mm -hmm. but I, I was asking actually one of the developers and I was having such a hard time. And then they, they said, you know what? Let, let's just figure it out on, on Cartoon Animator 5 and then just implemented more fixes in there. Um, okay, so yeah. for anyone who's curious, I, I put in the chat window, I put a link for um, the, the templates that you there can you download. Can, yes. Um, this is awesome. you can access this from the learn the learning section of, of uh, Cartoon Animator. Uh, now there is, um, I'm trying to remember here. It's it's I know it's all PSD format. Uh, the templates. There's a few here, but I'm pretty sure they're all just PSD formats. So yeah, you'd have to load those in as PSDs. Uh, I don't think there's a specific one for for uh, Illustrator. Um, yeah, but check that out. That's where all the resources are, the learning resources for, uh, you know, your template characters and stuff. Um, okay, so next question from Yesho yes, yes Deep. Um, how are some people good at drawing since childhood? <laughs> I actually um, have a, a, I have a TED talk talking about that. So you can check it out. I take 15 minutes to answer that. And the question that I answer is not exactly that. Is like, if I was not born with talent, can I still get good at drawing? And the answer is yes, right? <laughs> so you can just go to YouTube and type Mark Diaz TED Talk like this. Search for that and you'll have find that. So yeah, uh, in short, they just got lucky. <laughs> 
Maybe that's the answer. They got lucky in the genes, in the gene pool. But it, probably what you want to answer is, can I also draw like them? Yes, you can draw like them. And it's answered in a 15-minute TED Talk. Yeah, it's, it's, I mean, it's, it's kind of like those people that can learn a language in like, you know, a week yeah. or something. Lucky uh, them, people... like uh, good for you, right? For, for those. Yeah, absolutely. It's like a superpower. Um, okay, next question from Jack here. Uh, will iClone ever come to Mac um, to easily work with motion live conversion in 2D? No, there's no plans, unfortunately, Jack, for iClone to come to Mac. It's just, uh, it's right now there's, there's too much stuff um, in iClone, it's too advanced of a program to, to port it over to Mac would take a lot of resources. And if you're familiar with that in the 3D industry, the technology is moving just so fast. There's improvements coming like every year, like crazy improvements um, that it just doesn't make a lot of sense right now for us to port it over to Mac just because, I mean, the majority of people that are in that um, area do um, work on PC. So, uh, yeah, so I'm sorry I don't have any good news with, on that regard. Uh, next question from Anastub again, uh, which is better for rendering animation, MPEG or image sequence for video quality over frame per second? Um, myself, I mean, image sequence works fine. Um, it's a bit more customizable. Obviously you have the individual frames uh, split up into images. Uh, it does take often a bit more resources. MP4 is a very light video format. In terms of the video quality, I can't really say, to be honest. Uh, I don't really, I haven't really noticed in the, in the 2D realm, I haven't really noticed much of a difference in video quality. Have you, Mark, in terms of- uh, M -M Honestly, versus... in, in quality or video quality of over frames per second, I honestly, I don't find much video quality, but it's because the question is, where do you want to present that work? If it's going to be on the web or in your computer, it doesn't make any difference. But if you're going to project it in a big, huge, amazing screen in a theater, then you want to go with image sequence. The difference mm. is very slight, but in only in a huge screen, that's where you probably would notice the difference. But if not, don't worry about it. It's the same. Yeah, I generally wouldn't worry about it. Um, but like you said, image sequence is probably slightly better in yeah. terms of large resolution uh, images. Uh, okay, question from Darian. Last question. Uh, let's say I want to create three background and import the PNG or JPEG high res and animate on top. Oh yeah, it, I do that. Is this smart, time. or would it be consuming nightmare? No, that's totally fine, um, Darian. It's, it's a great way. Uh, it's a great thing to do. Yeah, I mean, I, the, basically, that's how you, like a lot of projects start by taking a three D background and bringing it in. Um, you can, there's, there's also a way you can take um, your two D images, your two D uh, scenes and import them into Blender and uh, extrude them and create 3D objects oh, from those, which is really the... cool. Yeah, I did a tutorial on that, I think a few months ago. Um, oh, I use Blender a lot, so I'm, I'm always looking for sensei. new ways to work with it. But uh, yeah, it's, it's really cool. Um, you can do it backwards, but uh, Darian's saying like, you know, create the 3D background and import it into the cartoon animator. Yeah, absolutely. People do it all the time, for sure. Um, Brian, my bad, didn't mean to ask the same question twice. Okay, no worries. All good, Brian. Um, Alvaro, can I record my voice in an animation in CT5? Yep, yeah, I can, yeah, you can actually do it in CT4. Do it from, yeah, from this version. Yeah. yeah, you can do it right now. Um, you can record your own voice I can, live. I can show really quick. Uh, sure, go for it. So you, look, if you just go here, right? There's this button right here. It's just one button away right here. Let me just show with complete emphasis right there. You just click there. And then create script. I'm going to record my voice. And then ready? I'm gonna say, who who is it for? Is for, hey uh, uh, Alvaro, hello hello. And that's it. I just press OK. And it even has a little bit of <laughs> lip sync in there. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, auto automatic lip sync. Yeah. Yeah. That's um, cool. Yeah. There's tutorials on how to do that. Like, you know, a lot more detail and stuff. But yeah, super easy to quickly do it like Mark just uh, showed there. Um, and that's one of the, you know, the charms of Cartoon Animator is you're able to, you know, whip that out in like 10 seconds it took you or something. Yeah, like, 
again, again, that's why I'm going to go back. If you wanted to do this in Tune Boom or any other software, you can do it perfectly. Like, hey, Alvaro, and then have everything drawn beautifully, and it will take you months. Or just take five seconds, and it's done. <laughs> right? In car cartoon animator is speed. is right there. Mm -hmm. Um, question from Shivani: Can I get, can we give a bone to any dummy character? I think we mentioned this earlier. Uh, yes, yes, you can create to your own any dummy type characters, character. no problem. Yeah. Um, question from Rion: How to increase loading speed when adding a new character? My computer is i7 9700, uh, 40 gigabyte or sorry, four gigabyte graphic card. Um, I yeah, graphic card SSD. Okay. Yeah, I mean, obviously, there's there's a few things you can do um, to increase the speed, the loading speed. Uh, more video RAM is obviously one of them. Uh, putting putting your characters and putting all your content on your SSD and not on a secondary drive. That's one of the ways you can increase the speed as well. Uh, there's all kinds of like interesting settings, and it depends on the kind of video card you have as well, too. Uh, but i7 9700 shouldn't be too bad. Um, and actually, a normal time is like five seconds right you you click and drag and then it loads for like five seconds for five and then loads so if you're wanting to have like zoop and then bang just like that that's probably a, a dream yeah <laughs> you're like an old, old batman, old batman <laughs> zoom, show. Bam, right Shazam. <laughs> Oh man so, yeah. that's awesome all right uh hey darian i thought you said that was the last question he has another one <laughs> he lied to us. <laughs> what if an artist wanted to, his or her work to look like Foster's imaginary friends from Cartoon Network? Is this achievable with the software? I, I would say yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, so, yeah. I really like that show. Uh, there are a couple of things that some, some limits, but actually one of my inspirations is kind of the Cartoon Network simplified drawings. So yeah, in probably what I would do is uh, learn to draw to that level so I can also get away with a lot of sprites. Like uh, I would recommend checking some of Gary Pye work. He has a ton of beautiful animations because he changes a lot of sprites. So mm -hmm. I would just do that. But yeah, I, I would uh, learn how to do a little bit of sprite animation. That, that is not covered in, in this webinar, but something to look for. Yeah, I, I think um, on, on that note, uh, Sally is asking if there's a Facebook group. I know there is a Cartoon Animator Facebook group, and it actually is um, yeah. moderated by Gary Pye. Um, I'm one of those really guys. Cool I don't guy. use Facebook, but uh, <laughs> I'm not sure if you have if you have a link, Mark, or anything like that, or do you know where? Yes, actually, it was posted uh, right here uh, by the Revolution team. Yeah, maybe if someone on the team can actually post the link for the yeah, Facebook it's, group. It's oh, you have it up there. Up there. Okay, yeah, it's, a, yeah, it's already there. Okay. But yeah, like this is Gary Pye, actually, the moderator. You can check some of, of his animations. Right? Hmm. But yeah, he does really cool work. And there's a ton of people posting stuff. And if you have questions like, hey, how can I do this? You can also get some help in there, right? Yeah, it's a, it's a great community um, for like, sure. I'm just putting it again, the link. Cool. Thanks for that. Uh, a few more questions to go. Uh, next one's from Luke. Um, can we import transparent background videos in Cartoon Animator without Pot3 video? When I import those, they have a black background. Yes, you can import in a transparent video into Cartoon Animator. Uh, has to be in uh, the MOV format. Uh, has to have alpha information on it. Um, if if there is an issue where you're you know you're still getting a black background. Um, there are some like troubleshooting steps you can take in terms of uh, uh, updating your drivers and stuff. I've had I've had people come to me where like they say, "Hey, I have this MOV, you know, alpha information all set, but it just doesn't uh, come in properly." And generally, a lot of that has been solved by um, you know updating drivers, or sorry, not drivers, uh, codecs, your your video codecs on your on your uh, on your computer, and make sure everything is, make sure everything is updated and. Uh, and if that fails, uh, a lot of people have answers in the forums as well, because each one, each case is different. Um, when, you're, when you're talking about video files, video formats and stuff, uh, there's so many different um, things that can go wrong in terms of the specific technical details. But yeah, you can import in transparent background videos for sure. Um, and if you're having the issue, then uh, give, give that a shot. Try updating the, the codex. Uh, what's that one? Um, 
uh, the, 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 the codec, the, the, like, the kind of like catch all codec update. There's a site that uh, you can. I don't remember. I, I, we actually mentioned it in our live class. We have mentioned it several mm. times, but damn, I don't remember. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Neither do I. I think um, VLC is the, is the video player that has like all the, the, the formats and stuff, the free video player. Um, but there's another one that's uh, it's skipping my mind. Maybe it'll come back to me later, like three o'clock in the morning. And, I'll be and, like, oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or you can also go to the Facebook group and ask there. Yeah, yeah, good idea. Um, all right, last one from Gabriella. Does my final work is my final work license free? Yeah, basically everything that you create with the software. There, I mean, there's no royalties on it. Uh, yes. Um, if you are if you are you know creating something that's you know for uh, you know professional movie studio or something like that, we just ask that you you know put our our name in the credits, the Reillusion uh, in the credits. And, you know this was created by Reillusion uh, Software, cartoon animator, yada yada. But there's no need no no need at this point to create uh, or to um, you know pay any royalties license. for your work. Yeah, yeah. And so don't that, worry about that. that pretty... may change in the near future, but. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but, but that is actually something that I find really cool because when you go to the content store and you get any characters from there, you don't need to pay an extra commercial license that some sites need that. Like, yeah, you can use this for personal use, but if you're going to create a trailer that is going to make you money, you need the, the commercial license. In here, no, like it's the same. You just buy it. You can create let's say that you create a product you use some cartoon animator characters and then you make millions of dollars all of those millions of dollars are yours right yeah for now for now <laughs> <laughs> there's been ch chatter around the office about uh, other other ways but uh yeah uh, you're, you're good to go now again like we just asked that you uh you know credit reillusion somewhere in your, in your production and we're able to use it as you know marketing purposes and all that stuff for now so um really cool yeah all right cool so that's Looks it. like we're all done. Um, Congratulations, guys. You learned so much. And you still have to some stuff to learn. You can go through the, the training, the full training. And if you have questions, you can reach out uh, in, during the training. You can reach out to me, sending me an email. You can join a Discord group. And yeah, I'll, I'll be there to help you and guide you too. All right. Awesome. Well, yeah. Uh, thanks again, Mark, for, uh, for being with us here. And, and uh you know, sharing your uh, your knowledge with us all, and uh, hope you have a good 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 Thursday evening or Wednesday evening, right? Wednesday, Wednesday evening. Please Wednesday. Yes. <laughs> uh, four twenty. You know, four twenty is the day for um, having fun. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you so much for having me, Kai. Yeah. Always having a good time with you, man. Right on, and yeah. everyone uh, have a good good evening, good morning, good afternoon, wherever you guys are in the world. And uh, again, make, make sure you check for the email and uh, we'll see you in uh, the next webinar. All right. Alrighty. Adios, Take care, guys. guys. Bye.